USS Marblehead was already considered obsolete when World War II exploded. Still, the U.S. Navy scout cruiser was assigned to the U.S. Asiatic Fleet to protect the Philippines and other American territories in the region. Its crew was eager for combat, but during the fateful Battle of Makassar Strait, the ship was severely damaged and almost sunk by Japanese bombers determined to finish the small Allied convoy passing near Cape Maduro. USS Houston and Marblehead took the brunt of the enemy attack, and with almost no electrical power, more than 30 flooded compartments, and a 9-foot hole in her hull, Marblehead's crew would have to manage the impossible to survive and make it back home. USS Marblehead After the outbreak of the First World War in 1914, President Woodrow Wilson adopted a partial isolationist posture. However, as American war production went rampant and the money lent to France and the UK reached staggering quantities, Wilson was convinced that the US had to join the fight or the country would go bankrupt. By July of 1918, it appeared that the war was coming to an end, but the German army was still going strong and displayed fierce determination. The Kriegsmarine also kept its unrestricted submarine warfare with relative effectiveness, which led the U.S. Navy to put more effort into protecting its convoys, full of supplies destined for the British Isles. The Omaha-class light cruisers were designed in response to the British Centaur C-class ones. Knowing that the Royal Navy had sea supremacy after Germany's defeat, U.S. Navy personnel believed that the British could eventually oppose American interests in the Pacific and other key regions. The U.S. Navy knew that it lacked fast cruisers to track down the enemy and prevent it from detecting friendly forces. Consequently, the Americans took measures ahead of an unlikely conflict. The Omaha-class cruisers were considered a potential solution. At 550 feet long and displacing 7,050 long tons, these scout cruisers could reach speeds of up to 40 miles per hour for scouting or support missions. Powered by four geared steam turbines using steam generated by 12 white Foster boilers, they also had an estimated range of 10,000 nautical miles at a speed of 10 knots. The USS Marblehead Omaha-class cruiser was one of the last war vessels to be authorized before the war ended, and was assigned to William Cramp & Sons Shipbuilding Company of Philadelphia on January 24, 1919. The ship was launched four years later and eventually commissioned under the command of Captain Chauncey Shackford. She displaced 9,058 long tons at full load, and during the post-war, its crew consisted of 30 officers and 430 men. Standard armament consisted of four 6-inch and 53 caliber guns mounted in two twin-gun turrets located fore and aft. Secondary armament comprised two 3-inch and 50 caliber anti-aircraft guns in single mounts. As the years passed, armament and equipment would vary to keep the offensive arsenal upgraded. One such case involved exchanging Marblehead's 200 mines for two triple and two twin above-water torpedo tubes that could carry 21-inch torpedoes. Other armament included three twin 1.6-inch Beaufort guns, 12 single 79-inch Erlikon cannons, 50-caliber machine guns, and 3-inch 50-caliber guns. Marblehead's guns were not armored. The deck had an armor thickness of 1.5 inches, the same amount as the bulkhead to the machinery rooms. In addition, the sides of the engine and boiler rooms were also protected by three inches of armor. Post-World War I USS Marblehead visited Australia, the Galapagos, Samoan, and Society Islands in 1925. Then, in early 1927, the ship cruised off Nicaragua to support American military presence in the region. That same year, Marblehead joined other U.S. Navy ships in Shanghai, China, as a display of force to protect U.S. interests in the rising Chinese Civil War. And in 1928, the ship made way for the Yangtze River and visited the lands of Japan and the Dutch colonies. During the following years, and before the beginning of World War II, the ship and her crew operated in the Atlantic and the Pacific as tensions with the Empire of Japan increased. By then, Omaha-class cruisers were considered obsolete, and when the Japanese were preparing for war in 1941, Marblehead was stationed at Cavite in the Philippines as part of the Asiatic fleet. On November 24th, the vessel's war diary stated, quote, The commander-in-chief of the U.S. Asiatic fleet sensed that the relations between the United States and Japan had reached such a critical state that movement of men of war was indicated. It was the prelude of what was to come. The Battle of Makassar Strait USS Marblehead was at Tarakan, Dutch Borneo, when Japan attacked Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. It is said that the crew saw a flying fish through one of Marblehead's open portholes, an omen for disaster. 
Marblehead would then join ships from the British and Dutch Royal Navies for sorties against Japanese shipping. The task force comprised USS Marblehead, heavy cruiser Houston, two Dutch cruisers, and seven destroyers. On February 3, 1942, they all set sail for the Makassar Straits. Japanese scout aircraft spotted the Allied ships near Cape Maduro in the Java Sea the following day. Moments later, the entire formation was attacked by 36 Imperial Navy bombers. The attacks were incessant, and while Marblehead kept dodging the fire for over half an hour, ammunition for the ship's three-inch guns was passed by hand from the magazines. The sailors kept performing this action as the Japanese bombers were roaring over. Meanwhile, the ship's anti-aircraft guns ran hot as the sailors concentrated fire into every bomber attempting to strike her down. At 10.26 a.m., eight bombers passed above Marblehead and dropped ordnance that straddled the ship. One bomb struck amidships, another hit the stern, and the third hit aboard forward. Fire quickly consumed the vessel, and Marblehead began to list to starboard. Seawater poured through the ship's hull, and she then began to settle by the bow. The wardroom and the sick bay were also destroyed, and with the emergency steering room damaged, Marblehead's rudders jammed in the hard left position. Her main deck was also ripped open, and the communication lines and power were cut. Also, the aft turret was inoperable. Still, the crew never gave up, and managed to assess the damage and get the situation under control amidst the choking smoke and steam. No Allied vessels were sunk during the battle, but by the time the Japanese aircraft left the area, Marblehead had lost 15 sailors, and over 80 men were injured. Also, her bow was barely above the sea, and more than two dozen compartments were entirely flooded. There was no doubt that the ship was sinking. However, even though the vessel was crippled, the engines were still working, and if she managed to stay afloat, there was a slight chance that the crew could make it back to safe harbor. A Ship's Odyssey Marblehead sailors were willing to risk everything if there was a chance for survival, but their journey home would not be easy. The closest port to repair the ship and attend to the wounded was Jalatjap in Indonesia, about 400 miles away. To get there, Marblehead would have to cross the Lombok Strait, which was within range of enemy bombers and submarines. To make matters worse, the only escort Marblehead had were two destroyers. After hours of tension, the ship maintained her course under high currents and made it to the strait without sinking. At midnight, Marblehead crossed it and headed west for Jalatjap. The crewmen struggled to keep the battered ship afloat. They also managed to feed and care for the wounded even when supplies were running low. Then, on February 5th, the ships were sighted by Japanese bombers. Still, they only attacked one of the accompanying destroyers, USS Paul Jones, but she was not damaged. The following morning, Marblehead reached Jalatjap. The crew was taken care of, but the ship was not entirely repaired, as the floating dock was too short to accommodate it. Still, the crew and shore workers managed to lift the ship as much as possible and patch the nine-foot hole that had opened Marblehead's hull. They also made plenty of repairs, and power was restored in several parts of the ship. The engineers also restored fresh water. After resting for over a week, Marblehead and its crew made way for Ceylon in Sri Lanka, almost 4,000 miles away. Escorted by submarine tender USS Otis, the almost unseaworthy ship steadily maintained course. When the ship arrived in Ceylon on February 21st, the crew had to keep repairing the vessel by themselves because the dockyard was full. Then, on March 15th, the ship made it to South Africa, where it refueled at the Royal Navy's Simonstown dockyard. The ship made an admirable impression wherever it went, as sailors and technicians felt puzzled at how she could still be afloat. They also admired the crew's commitment to saving Marblehead. One final trip. After more extensive repairs, the vessel was almost patched up and left South Africa on April 15th. However, she was now on safe waters with an easier path ahead. USS Marblehead then rounded the Cape of Good Hope and streamed via Recife, Brazil, for New York. Then, after almost four months in survival mode, she reached the Brooklyn Naval Yard on May 4, 1942. Marblehead was repaired entirely and equipped with the latest armor and armament upgrades. By October, she was ready for action and rejoined the U.S. fleet. Marblehead would even join the task force that was part of Operation Dragoon, the southern invasion of France in 1944. She was eventually decommissioned in November of 1945 and scrapped in early February of 1946. In total, Marblehead and her crew crossed more than 200,000 miles in 89 days with limited power, no habitable areas, countless leaks, inoperable steering, and many other problems. 
It was due to their professionalism and commitment to stick together that they miraculously survived and took care of the ship that was their home for the entire war. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of the incredible tale of survival of the USS Marblehead's crew. Do you know of other survival stories of the Pacific Theater during World War II?